What's up guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jess if you haven't met yet and I am so happy that you are here today. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you some hard summer lineup recommendations. So hard summer is a three day festival that is in San Bernardino, California. The first hard summer actually happened in 2007. So it's been going on for a while, obviously besides 2020 when we had no festivals, but it originally started in Los Angeles and is graduated to San Bernardino. It's at the NOS Event Center. And I think I also saw that this festival brings in like over 150,000 people every year. So it is a big festival for those of you that are in Southern California. I do wanna preface before we actually get into it that I am a bass music lover. While I don't dislike house or anything, bass music is my preference. If you are new here, just so you are aware. As I go through these, you'll see that I lean toward bass music, um, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna recommend any other genres. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. I am not going to Heart Summer, but I wanted to give you guys some lineup recommendations if you are going. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna pop the lineup on this side of the screen so we can kind of go through it together. And I'm gonna be going Friday, Saturday, Sunday as it's kind of grouped on this lineup. The first name on this lineup that I would recommend is Meg The Stallion. So kind of an odd one and probably not what you were expecting. <coughs> Jesus Christ, a bird just flew into that window. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times birds fly into this window, but I've never had to do it while I've been filming. I do think that she would put on a hell of a show. I think her like persona, her personality, her energy is like unmatched. And I actually heard that she did very, very good at Okeechobee earlier this year. So that would be the first artist that I would recommend. Next on the list is Zed's Dead Back to Back Subtronics. Guys, do I even need to explain myself? I don't think so, but I will for those of you that maybe are new to the EDM scene. Um, Zed's Dead and Subtronics would be an absolute legend of a back-to-back. -back. They are both icons in the bass music space. Subtronics and what he's done in the last few years, while he's been a DJ for a long time, I just feel like he's absolutely blown up and he is, his latest album is incredible. Zed's Dead sets really do take you on a journey and that's why I am so drawn to them. So that is a back-to-back -back that I would non-negotiable. That's a non-negotiable. Grizz is next on the lineup. And I'll just, I didn't realize this lineup was so fire. Like I don't go to festivals in Southern California or California in general. So, and there's no reason for that. It's just a long way to go. And I didn't realize that this lineup is fire, or at least Friday is. If I lived in California, I would be there on Friday. Grizz, so if you are new here, I am a Grizz stan. I absolutely love him. He was my top played artist on Spotify last year in 2021. Grizz is where funky jazz music and saxophone meets dubstep and it is absolutely incredible. He will blow your mind. I feel like he's really, really evolving and like I truly feel honored that I'm alive when he's making music. So I <laughs> um, highly recommend going to see Grizz. And next is Nightmare. So Nightmare is actually one of my favorite dubstep artists ever, period. I haven't seen him in a long time, which makes me really, really sad, but, and I also don't feel like he gets the credit that he really deserves because his sets are so high energy. He throws the fuck down and he has so much energy as well. Like how he gets up on stage and like just does what he does is incredible. Um, I would highly recommend if you have never seen Nightmare, I would check out his um, Into the Dreamverse at the Brooklyn Mirage. He played there a few weeks ago. The Dreamverse is kind of like his new project or he hasn't really fully said what it is yet, but I would highly recommend watching that set because that is like chef's kiss. Next is Valentino Khan. So I told you guys I wouldn't be recommending all bass music. Well, this is bass house. I'm kind of walking a fine line there, but Valentino Khan will have you shaking your ass for a hour or however long he is playing. That would be one of those sets where you're like, you need 10 minutes afterwards because you're like, ooh. I really did just throw my ass in a circle for 60 minutes, but I would highly recommend going to see him. Next is more Kismet. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize that they came out with an album earlier this summer and I just listened to it like two days ago. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And they are only like 17 years old, 18 I think. And the energy that they put into their like shows and like the videos that I see on TikTok and stuff, like they really give like 110% every single time. So I would highly recommend going to see more Kismet. They opened for Alice in Wonderland at Temple of Wonderland last fall and Chef's Kiss would highly recommend. If you are a heavy dubstep slash rhythm lover, I would recommend going to see Sullivan King and Kaiwachi. Next I would recommend is Craze. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually how you pronounce that because this is not a DJ I'm familiar with, but it's a drum and bass set. So 10 out of 10 times I'm gonna recommend that you go to a drum and bass set. Um, I'm so glad that drum and bass is finally getting some like 
spotlight and people are listening to it more and you're getting more drum and bass sets. I really like it because not only is like fun and it's a good music, but I think it really breaks up like a festival night. So like, especially if you're doing like all bass music or all house music or whatever it might be, I really feel like it adds like just a nice kind of like flow and kind of like balances out a night. Last on Friday, I would recommend is Cannibalist. She is a female deep dubstep artist or deep dubstep slash experimental. Saw her open for Liquid Stranger and she's very, very good. I'm excited to see where she goes. Next is Saturday. So the first artist on the list that I would recommend is Alice in Wonderland. If you're new here, she is my favorite artist of all time. So I'm always gonna tell you guys to see her. Uh, she's kind of where future bass meets EDM trap music. She has got a very unique sound, but she really does put her heart and soul into what she does. And there's nothing quite like an Alice in Wonderland set in my opinion, so I would highly recommend going to see her. Next is Subfocus Back to Back Zed's Dead. So I'm not sure if they've announced this anywhere. I haven't seen it, but I also didn't look really hard. Uh, but Subfocus is drum and bass. So part of me thinks that this is gonna be a drum and bass back to back. So I would highly recommend going. If Zed's Dead touches it, it's gonna be good, but I'm more than likely, like as you get to know me, I'm always gonna recommend going to back-to-backs because you never know when they're gonna happen next. So next is Ellis Dream. He is a extremely talented, like experimental dubstep, experimental bass artist. He was one of my favorite sets at Electric Forest this last year, and he is truly such a light of a human being. His energy and like the heart and soul that he puts into his music and like his community is unmatched. So if you like any of the Wakan sounds or you are really drawn to the Wakan festival lineup, definitely recommend checking out Ella Stream. Next on Saturday is Dimension. He is a German based artist from the UK, which if you didn't know, I'm from England. So I don't know. I feel like I'm seeing Dimension on lineups more and more, but a part of me wants to tell you, go see him because you just never know when he's going to be on the lineup again. So, and again, German bass, so good. I actually just discovered one of his, like uh, a curated playlist that he makes on Spotify. I will link it down below so you guys can check it out. I think it's very, very good. And last for Saturday is a hundred drums. So I saw her at Electric Forest this last year and she, it was one of the most unique sets, one of the most unique sounds I've heard in a very long time. And I think she's just like on the verge of what she could be doing. Dead Beats has picked up some of her songs. She actually played at Dead Rocks just this year. So I would highly recommend going to her set. She, it's a very experimental kind of like wonky, unique bass music. And last but not least, we have Sunday. First artist I would recommend is Sudden Death, the back-to-back -back Marotta. Well, I'm not sure that I would be there if I was going to this festival. If you like heavy dubstep, rhythm, I don't even know how else to describe it, but like very heavy dubstep, you need to be at this set. I can only imagine what the mosh pits look like now. That's gonna be insane, like truly gonna be insane. So if you like heavy dubstep, definitely check out that back to back. Next is Side Piece. So this is a great house duo that seems to be really booming right now. I feel like, like once we heard their name, we just never stopped hearing it. So it's actually Nitty Gritty and Party Favor and they came together to make this duo. Unfortunately, I haven't seen them yet. I really, really want to because I do like all the music that they put out. But from what I've heard, they put on an absolutely incredible show. Next is Mersive. So I'm taking bets now that Mersive will be one of my top artists on Spotify this year. I just can't stop listening to him. And I saw him at Electric Forest and he blew my mind such a great experimental artist and he's also an, again one of those people that just like the energy that he just like emits and the care and love that he has for his community is unmatched again if you like wakan music i would highly recommend checking out immersive and also his record label which is morpho uh, morpho is actually doing a takeover at wakan fest this year which if you're going i'm so jealous of you again very very like experimental slash down tempo incredible and like, don't let down tempo like scare you because it can be very slow but you can go hard as fuck too. So, Rekno is another artist that I would recommend. The fact that I haven't seen a Rekno set breaks my heart. I was supposed to see him at Dance Fest. I was gonna see him at Electric Forest but honestly it wasn't the cards for me. So he is also a vocalist and he has dancers and stuff too while he's on stage. So he's got a whole performance. Um, if you're familiar with the song Medusa by Grizz, Rekno is also on that song and he's the vocals on that as well. So, so high energy, so fun. Last but not least for Sunday is Level Up. So she is another female dubstep artist who is really taking off. I feel like every set that I've seen of hers, it just keeps getting better and better and better. And she's like, you can tell she's really working hard and like perfecting her craft. So highly recommend going to see Level Up. I'm also always probably gonna recommend you seeing like female dubstep artists or female bass artists because 
we need to support them and we need to show them the love and we need more of them on these lineups. Let me know in the comments if you're going and who you're most excited to see. And even if you're not going, like who are you like, holy shit, like I would be there in a heartbeat. Cause there's a couple back to backs on here that I think are just unreal. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.